Good morning. Good morning. Welcome you all to worship on this Lord's Day. We're celebrating today the day of Pentecost. Uh, if you're a guest with us this morning, we want to extend a special welcome to each one of you and let you know that you are invited to the Lord's table. Uh, Calvary is a place where we try to be very intentional about acknowledging that we walk this baptismal journey together and that we all need to be fed with God's people along the way. So come and be joined to, together with us in this meal. Thanks to all who are hosting our worship today, for those who are serving as ushers, greeters, readers, communion assistants. Uh, we thank our sound and projection crew this morning. Uh, LaVon Birk, who is bringing our musical message. Thank you to you. Uh, and uh, Russ Bunker, of course, our director of music. If you haven't done so already, I'll invite those of you who are seated on the center aisle to find the pew pad that's there next to you and sign that and pass it down. Take that as an opportunity to get to know those who are seated beside you this morning. And we're honored to be receiving uh, 22 mem new members of Calvary this morning. And so I invite you to take the opportunity when you can to introduce yourselves and get to know a little something about each one. Uh, we'll be introducing them during the fellowship hour this morning, so come and celebrate with that. Uh, this is a particularly good time to be intentional about wearing your name tags. Uh, it helps everyone to, to be reminded of who they sit maybe next to every Sunday, but also to get a, have an opportunity to get to know those new members. Speaking of name tags, some of you may have noticed that the mailboxes have been reordered where your name tags are. So if your box seems to be missing in the shuffle, take a closer look. And, and it's possible that we have accidentally lost you in that. So if that's happened, no offense, um, let us know so that we can take corrective <laughs> measures about that. Vacation Bible School uh, starts tonight and runs through Wednesday evening. Each evening starts with a, a meal at 5.30 and finishes at 7.45. I think if you haven't registered yet, we could probably find a way to fit you in. So definitely can find a way to fit you in. <laughs> Uh, there are a couple of, of things, exciting things happening. Out, uh, as, you, as you go from the narthex into the fellowship hall, there's a little box with worship on the go bags that Pastor Cassie has put together. So if, you're, if you are uh, not able to be at church for worship on a Sunday, she says everything you need for a worship service is in here, including a candle, some activities, some scripture readings, and so forth. So take the opportunity to to use those if you're going to be uh, missing worship. There are more details about that in your bulletin. Also in your bulletin this morning is a green insert. On one side, uh, some information about the Pathways Village happening at Camp Emmaus in August, and so an opportunity to get involved with that. On the flip side is some information, some detailed information about a matching funds uh, program that we have been able to have here at Calvary now so that um, more and more people are involved in electronic giving and for all those who, are, who uh, sign up for recurring giving at Calvary, there will be matching dollar for dollar and those matching funds will help to defray uh, seminary costs for Amber Kalina as she begins her work at the Lutheran School of Theology in Chicago this fall. So uh, take the opportunity to to take advantage of that, if you're flirting with e-giving, this is a good chance to get involved with that as well. There are lots of announcements in your bulletin insert. All of them are important, so I do invite you to read them in detail after worship. Are there other announcements? Oh, the quilts. Did I tell you about the quilts? So the quilts are here this morning because uh, they are a demonstration of some of the work of our quilters over the course of the year. Uh, and these quilts are shared in a variety of ways. Some of them um, are shared through Worth Lutheran World Relief and go to various parts of the country and the world. Um, some of them are used locally. For example, our high school graduates receive quilts. Uh, every time there is a baptism, the, the newly baptized receives a quilt. And so we are also celebrating that work today. We will take a moment now to center our hearts and minds on God and prepare ourselves for worship. I invite you to remain seated 
for the call to worship. The day of Pentecost has come. We are gathered here in this place. We celebrate the diverse identities of all gathered. Let us hear of God's deeds of power. Let us listen, speak, and act as with tongues of fire. Together we confess. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts and minds that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able as we join in our opening hymn, All Are Welcome.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please be seated. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For your people here who have come to give you praise, for the strength to live your word, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, and defend us, O God. Let us pray together. God of fire, your spirit rushes in and sweeps us up in its wake. Send us forth in the fire of your inspiration to light up the world with the witness to your unquenchable love. In the name of the risen one, amen. His blood. 
Are there any kids that would like to join me this morning for a children's message? All right, come on up, kids. All right. Can I sit by you? Thanks. How are you doing, Liam? Good. Good. How's your new house? Good. Yeah? Good. Couple more kids coming. All right. Yeah, they are beautiful dresses, aren't they? Look at that. Well, good morning, boys and girls. How are you doing this morning? Are you good? Do you see anything that's different <coughs> at, in the sanctuary this morning? What's different this morning? The blankets. Yeah, there's blankets. That's different. Does anyone else see anything else that looks different? The paint blanket. Uh huh. Yeah. What do you think, Cadence? Um, I think it's different. Yeah, we have blankets all over the place this morning. Why? So all of these blankets were made by some of the women here at Calvary. What do you kids do with blankets? You cover up? What would you say, Cadence? Yeah, you sleep with them. How about if you're feeling a little scared at night, could you wrap up tight in your blanket? Yeah. yeah. How about if it's really sunny outside, could you put your blanket over your head to protect you from the sun? Yeah. How about if it's raining outside and you don't have an umbrella, could a blanket keep you dry? Yeah. Okay, what, Liam? Uh, you know, when I was sleeping, uh -huh. I, 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 I really saw my family run, but they're not real. Yeah. Sometimes it can feel a little scary at night, can it? Yeah, and then when, when I burn, uh -huh. it, I just, they disappear. Yeah. Yeah, well, we have these blankets up here, and some of them are going to stay right here in Purim, and some of them are going to go all around the world to people who need them. And so I was wondering if you would help me this morning to say a prayer over these quilts as we send them out. Can you kids help me do that? So will you all touch a blanket this morning? Can you touch one of the blankets? Yeah, they're very soft. And will you repeat after me? Dear God, Dear God thank you for these gifts. Thank you for these gifts. And for these warm blankets. And for these warm blankets. Bless the people who will use them. Bless, Bless the, the people, people who will use them. use them. Bless the people who made them. Bless, Bless the, the people, people who made them. them. And thank you. And thank, thank you, you that your love is all around the world. That, that your love, love is all around, around the world. world. Through Jesus we pray. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thanks for coming up this morning, kids. You can head back to your seats. I, I had a bad dream last night. You had a bad dream last night? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I've missed Liam. <laughs> Um, at this time, we're going to have the installation of our VBS leaders. So if you are helping with VBS this morning, would you just stand where you're at? So we have several folks who are involved. It takes about 50 adults in total. So God is a welcoming storyteller, always inviting us into the story and generously making way for God's story to be ours. This wonderful news is your invitation to claim the story and proclaim it to others. As you guide children through VBS this week, will you, sh will you love God and share the good news of Jesus with all the kids there? If so, please say, I will and I ask God to help and guide me. I will and I ask God to help and guide me. In congregation, God is a welcoming storyteller, and this good news to be shared isn't just for those who are leading, but for all of us. So will you share God's love and share the good news of Jesus with the children, youth, and adults that you encounter? And will you support the ministries of Calvary that help us to share God's good news? If so, please say, we will, and we ask God to help and guide us. 
We will, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let's give a round of applause for those who are helping with BBS this week. And we will continue with the reading of scripture. The scripture lesson this morning is from Galatians 4, 1 through 7. My point is this, heirs, as long as they are minors, are no better than slaves, though they are the owners of all the property, but they remain under guardians and trustees until the date set by the father. So with us, while we were minors, we were enslaved to the elemental spirits of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child, and of a child, then also an heir through God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. <clears throat> lesson this morning is from Acts 2, 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house that they were sitting, divided as of tongues, divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Now I've been thinking about the creed this week and all of the I believe statements that we profess. And I couldn't help but notice that our creed says very little about the Spirit. I mean, it says I believe in the Holy Spirit and then we go on to confess that we believe in the Holy Catholic or Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, And while these things are the work of the Spirit, they're more the marks of the church. And now I'm not proposing that our Apostles' Creed is somehow lacking or that we should think about changing it, but I've been wondering this week, as we confess and um, proclaim and celebrate the indwelling of the Holy Spirit among us on Pentecost Sunday, I have been wondering what else might we say about the work of the Spirit? And so I turned this week to scripture. So we hear in Genesis, in the beginning, as God was creating the heavens and the earth, that the wind of God, the Spirit of God, swept over the waters. So we could say the Spirit was present as time began, and that the Spirit is active in creation. Now, Spirit wind, breath, those are all the same word in Hebrew, and that's ruach. So everyone say ruach, ruach. Ruach. Can you feel the breath with that? Now in the second story of creation in Genesis, we're told that God stooped down and formed man from the mud of the earth, and then to make him come to life, God breathed, or ruach, into his nostrils, the breath of life or the spirit of life. So we say the spirit was present as time began, the spirit is active in creation, and the spirit is life-giving. 
And then later on in Exodus, Moses encountered God through the burning bush in the middle of the wilderness, and Moses asked for God's name. You see, God had told Moses that he was going to go back to Egypt to free the Hebrew people from the bonds of slavery, and Moses did not want to go, and he was trying to get out of it through a variety of excuses. And then as he reluctantly agreed, he said, Well, God, if I'm going to go and say that the God of your ancestors has freed you and has sent me to free you, they're going to say, Well, who is this God? What is this God's name? And God said, tell them that the Lord has sent you. Now in Hebrew, that's four letters, Yod, He, Va, and He. So throughout the generations, some have pronounced those four letters, Yod, He, Va, He, as Yahweh. And some have said that it's simply too holy to speak. And others will make note that those four letters, Yod, He, Va, He, are all of the breath letters in Hebrew. So you could say that God's name is simply breathing. So we hear the Spirit was present as time began. The Spirit is active in creation. The Spirit is life-giving. And the Spirit is in our every breath. Now fast forward to the Gospel of John. Jesus promises the disciples that the Holy Spirit will be with them and will abide with them. And after the resurrection, as the disciples were hiding together, scared and afraid in a locked room, Jesus appeared to them and said, Peace be upon you. Receive the Holy Spirit. And then he breathed on them. So we hear the Spirit was present as time began. The Spirit is active in creation. The Spirit is life-giving. The Spirit is in our every breath. And the Spirit abides with us and offers us peace. And then we have our reading today from Acts, when the day of Pentecost had come, and there was a sound like the rush of a violent wind filling the entire house, and divided tongues as a fire appeared on them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages because of the Spirit. And we, so we see that those who witness to Christ are able to speak whatever language was needed for everyone to hear the good news of Jesus in a language they could understand. So through this we hear that the good news of Christ is given to us by the Spirit and it's for everyone. So, the Spirit was present as time began. The Spirit is active in creation. The Spirit is life-giving. The Spirit is in our every breath. The Spirit abides with us and offers us peace. And the Spirit transcends any division and distinction so that all may hear the good news of Christ. Now, there are several commonalities that we see as we read about the Spirit throughout the New Testament. We see that the Spirit is specifically tied to the risen Christ and that the Spirit's work is to draw us humans into a relationship with God and it's a relationship like God the Father has with God the Son. And now our reading from Galatians this morning emphasized those two pieces through the language of inheritance. So as a reminder, Paul was writing to the churches of Galatia who were um, influenced by some really strict law-observant teachers. And they persuaded the Galatians that to become Christian, they must first observe all the Jewish law. And Paul argues that this observing the law was intended to be an interim in God's uh, long story of how God interacts with humanity. And Paul argues with Christ's death, and resurrection, a new chapter of faith has begun. So Paul says we are heirs. And Paul talks about it as children versus adults to contrast the before and the afterlife of Christ. So before children um, became of age, they could not inherit anything. So So Paul argued that an heir was indistinguishable from anyone else. But after a child became an adult, they could own and control their property. 
And so this difference of before and after was particularly dramatic in ancient life. And so Paul is saying that if that feels dramatic, it's just as dramatic the before and after because of Christ. Because God has sent his son, and now we are all heirs, inheritors of that promise. So Paul says, you who are baptized into Christ, you belong to Christ. You are heirs to the promise. So all that God has is yours. And what does God have? What belongs to you? Well, it's God's love. It's Christ's freedom. It's the presence, the indwelling of the Spirit. Okay, so the list again. So the Spirit was present as time began. The Spirit is active in creation. The Spirit is life-giving. The Spirit is in our every breath. The Spirit abides with us and offers us peace. The Spirit transcends distinctions and divisions so that all may hear the good news of Christ. And the Spirit's work is to draw us into relationship with God, a relationship like God the Father and God the Son have. So through the Spirit, we're drawn more deeply into relationship with God. And we're told that that is a relationship that bears fruit. And that's where Paul leads us next in Galatians 5. He says, Christ has freed us. That means the Spirit will bear fruit in your life. Fruit like love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Paul says, if, we, if you live by the Spirit, you are guided by the Spirit. So if you're in relationship with God, your, your life will bear these fruits. Now, Reverend Dr. Mary Hinkle Shore talks about the Spirit like this. So she says that both the identity of the Spirit and the Spirit's work are specific, and that Christ's living presence is knitting human community back together, and it's bringing us all into a relationship of love and of commitment with God. So in the Gospel of John, Jesus breathes on his disciples so that they may continue his work of forgiving sins and holding on to all whom he has drawn in. And in the book of Acts, the gift of tongues is that all gathered may hear the good news addressed directly to him. And in Galatians, God sends the Spirit so that those who receive it may address God in an intimate form, Abba, which means Father. So the abiding presence of the Spirit is the life of the risen Christ, and it's with us, the church, as we are gathered and sent for the sake of the world. So I believe the Spirit was present as time began. The Spirit is active in creation. The Spirit is life-giving. The Spirit is in our every breath. The Spirit abides with us and offers us peace. The Spirit transcends divisions and distinctions so that all may hear the good news of Christ. The Spirit's work is to draw us into relationship with God. And the Spirit bears fruit in our lives. And that has real, concrete results. It has an impact on the people we meet, the choices we make, the lives that we live. Thanks be to God for the gift of the Spirit. Amen. Amen.
this time I'd like to invite forward new members and their sponsors to gather around the rail. So we present the following persons who desire to make public affirmation of their baptism and to become members of Calvary Lutheran Church. Bob and Virgin Bond, Grant Dirkhuizen and Caitlin Plain, Ryan Froling, Bud and Donna Clement, Amana Lampkins, Alan and Vicki Matsky, Aaron and Tiffany Meyer, Mac and Chet, Tristan and Danielle Schaefer, Nikki Thompson, and Duane and Louise Thompson. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these brothers and sisters whom you have made your own by water and the word and baptism. You have called them to yourself, given them the gifts of your spirit, and nourish them in the community of faith. Now we ask for a blessing on them as they become members of Calvary Lutheran Church. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I ask you to profess your faith. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? If so, answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support these sisters and brothers and pray for them in their life in Christ? If so, answer, we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. I'd like to have you turn around and face the congregation at this time. People of Calvary, let's welcome these new members, first with applause and then with the sharing of the peace. So as members of God's household, I pray the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share a sign of God's peace with one another. As you are ready, I invite you to be seated. We will continue with our offering and also have an offering of music.
Will you rise as you are able? We'll skip to the great Thanksgiving. Thank you. The Lord be with you. and merciful God, everything is filled with your glory. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. After giving thanks, he gave it to all of them, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his command to love one another, his life and death, his resurrection and ascension, we pray for his coming again, even as we cry. Amen, come Holy Spirit. pray your Holy Spirit that all your promises may come to us and your whole creation. Amen, come Holy Spirit, amen, come Holy Spirit, amen, come Holy Spirit, amen, come Holy Spirit. This we pray through Jesus our Savior and Lord. Amen. Know that all are welcome today to join in this meal of God's forgiveness and love. You'll come together via the center aisle and we'll gather standing around the rail, beginning in the center and moving out. Um, we are communing today with individual cup. We do have grape juice if that is a need for you. It's a lighter colored liquid in the center of the tray. And we also have gluten-free wafers also available in the center of the tray. Come, for all things are now ready.
Christ given for you. May these gifts of Jesus' body and blood strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Amen. Will you please rise as you are able. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen.
Go in peace, serve the Lord.